this is Peter Slinda for Chess24, introducing a series of videos on Mikhail Tsal, the 8th world champion, an extremely exciting chess player and also a personal hero of mine, both as a chess player and uh, as a human being. I hope I haven't done a disservice in this series to his uh, games which influenced uh, many generations of uh, chess players to come. I hope you enjoy it and uh, please let me know if you like the format because there are more exciting chess players out there we could cover in this way. But for now, I hope you enjoy the games of Tal. I most certainly enjoyed uh, annotating them and bringing them to you. Hi, this is Peter Svidler for Chess24 and my uh, first video in, in the Tal series. Uh, this video will be dedicated to the early years of uh, Mikhail Tal. And uh, the games I've chosen for this video are somewhat one-sided, but I wanted to illustrate um, just uh, how big an advantage in uh, uh, tactical complications uh, Tal had in the early years of a generally fairly decent opposition and just how unused people were to his style of play and uh, these two games I think illustrated fairly well uh, even if the chess content is uh, as I said uh, reasonably one-sided. Uh, the two games I've chosen are from uh, 1956 and 1957, and we'll start with the game uh, Tal played with Black against Bohuti Gurgenidze in, in 1957. Uh, Bohuti played d4, and uh, uh, immediately it becomes obvious that uh, Tal's repertoire was uh, built uh, with his particular strength in mind. Uh, Black plays knight of 6 c4, c5, and uh, opts for, for the Benoni structures, where uh, play is uh, very unbalanced and uh, asymmetrical and uh, uh, players who have a better understanding of dynamics and uh, better tactical awareness uh, perhaps have the, the, the bigger edge. e6, knight c3 takes takes, uh, knight of 3 g6. Uh, these days uh, white's play in this line uh, is um, more varied and uh, perhaps the, the two more popular lines against the Benoni these days are uh, e4 bishop g7 and in this position h3 bishop d3 and also there are a lot of lines where white uh, develops his bishops on, uh, to, uh, to g2. But in those years uh, I think uh, the most popular system against the, the Benoni structures was the classical one where white goes bishop b2 castles and then plays knight d2 trying to uh, secure a very very beautiful square for this knight on c4. And this is what Gurgenidze played. In this position, I think, objectively, uh, first of all, uh, uh, if given the opportunity, Black uh, generally plays bishop g4 and takes on f3. Uh, this, this opportunity is now gone. And in this position, uh, I suspect the more, the more critical approach is to play knight 97 and 95. But uh, what Tal did is also a, a well-known uh, way of developing he, his pieces. Uh, I myself uh, landed in this position in my match against uh, Anna Ushanina in the, in the Trumse World Cup, and I played b6 in this position, and soon, soon, soon had a very, very unpleasant, unpleasant game. And uh, Tal went knight a6 uh, with a similar plan in mind, as you will see. Uh, rook e1 uh, is a normal um, developing move, I don't think there's much wrong with it. Knight c7. Now that the knight is on c7, white happily plays a4, because if, if black wants to put his knight on before, he now has to lose an additional tempo putting it back on a6. Tal plays b6 in this position, uh, perhaps aiming in some positions to play bishop a6 and just gently making a development move. And uh, there are many options available to white in this position. Bishop f1 is one, and uh, maybe even f2, f3 aiming to play knight c4 straight away. But what uh, Gurgenidze did is also a very, very natural move. Queen c2. Uh, and uh, now white is ready to play knight c4 next move, uh, to which Tal replies by playing knight g4. Uh, and in this position, objectively speaking, if white takes on g4, bishop takes g4 and goes knight c4, uh, Black's position is, is very, very unpleasant because he's uh, ended up, I think, with the uh, wrong light pieces and the pawn on d6 will be under severe pressure the moment the bishop arrives on f4. And generally speaking, in this position, I think uh, Black is facing uh, a very unpleasant uh, defensive task. Instead of which, uh, Gorginidze, who was a, a very decent player, uh, even if uh, this game will not really uh, be able to uh, demonstrate that, he shows uh, 
a somewhat uh, amazing to me um, naivete uh, in in approaching a game against uh, a player such as Tal because uh, once Black plays knight g4, it's safe to assume he has some kind of a tactical idea in mind. Not only queen h4, which uh, looks obvious, but also something else. And to play uh, h2, h3 in this position, which is what Gorginidze did, uh, shows uh, that uh, people were still unprepared. Perhaps I'm, I'm making too general a conclusion from one game, but I think uh, it would be fair to say that people were somewhat unprepared to the level of uh, uh, aggression uh, Tal uh, was capable of uh, unleashing at any point if he gave him half an opening. And uh, h3 here is just very, very bad, objectively, and uh, a player lesser than uh, Mikhail Tal would probably have found, uh, found the refutation, but uh, in his hands uh, you can be certain this is uh, already maybe a winning position for black. Knight takes f2, of course, the knight uh, never planned to return. King f2, queen h4 check, king f1 is uh, uh, the only move, bishop d4, bishop knight d1. And strictly speaking, even bishop takes h3 is very, very strong here. But of course, Tal plays queen takes h3. Uh, I think uh, in his approach to chess, aesthetics played uh, a very, very significant role. And uh, making a move like this on the board is, uh, well, a present, pleasant sensation. Uh, bishop f3, queen h2. And... Uh, Black is uh, obviously, uh, Black has a fantastic attack here and uh, the bishop will come to a6 and uh, White has trouble meeting even those threats but uh, Black also needs to open up some files for, for, for the rooks so uh, f5 will, will be a, a very logical way of uh, opening the e and f files uh, for the rooks to join in the attack which is what happened in the game. Uh, objectively, uh, I think this position is already beyond salvation for white. If white goes, let's say, knight c4, uh, black plays f5, knight f2, bishop a6, and uh, there are some uh, prosaic ways of, of losing this for white, uh, such as, for instance, bishop e3, f4, knight, knight takes e4, bishop e3, rook e3, takes on c4, and then check and take on a1, and uh, black will win the endgame arising after knight f6, check king f7, but, but if white after uh, knight f2, bishop a6 tries to at least uh, uh, temporarily stop uh, the black attack and plays a4, a5, uh, the machine uh, suggested a very, very funny way of winning this position with black, which I thought I might show you because it, it just made me laugh out loud when I saw it on the screen. f4, rook e4, rook e4, knight e4, and in this position, the machine suggested that black could play b5, driving the knight onwards to d6, and then just attack the knight by playing knight e8. <laughs> and white uh, has to uh, simply give up the knight altogether, because if white takes on e8, now before discovered check, uh, just delivers mate, because uh, white needed to be able to play knight d6, c4 in this position. But uh, the move Bohuti uh, Gorginidze played uh, also doesn't help. He, he went knight e3, to which uh, black replied f5. Instead of f5, a very uh, funny idea, I would say, is to play knight a6, uh, aiming to, uh, aiming to uh, put the knight on b4, and then develop the bishop to a6, and in this fashion to include uh, absolutely every single piece in the attack, but f5 just uh, wins quite efficiently, so uh, there is no need for those uh, uh, geometry motifs to, to come into play. If white tries to run with the king here, king e2, black will take on e3, king e3, knight takes d5, forcing the king back to, uh, to the corner, and now queen h4 check, g3, queen h2 check, bishop g2, and knight f6 is perhaps the easiest way to win. The knight comes to g4 and the white's position completely collapses. And in the game after knight dc4, black took only 4 bishop e4, bishop a6. And this position is just totally winning. Black wins um, with almost any legal move, bishop f3. Uh, I quite like in this position the idea of playing rook f8, king e2 and rook takes f3, king takes f3. And in this position, uh, maybe the most effective way to, 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 to kill off the game is to play rook e8. Uh, cutting off the e-file uh, as an escape route for the white king, and then uh, black will converge on the king and uh, give mate. 
But uh, what Tal did is also fine. He went rook e5, rook a3, rook a8, and now black is ready to at least win back all the material. And the game continued. Bishop d2, knight takes d5, bishop d5, rook d5, and after king e2, bishop e3, rook e3, bishop takes c4. White finally resigned because if he takes on c4, uh, queen g2, king d1, and queen takes d2 is made. Now, as I said, this is a, a somewhat one-sided game, uh, which is, from a purely chess perspective, perhaps not that interesting. Uh, and uh, generally speaking, a game like this, uh, these days you will uh, uh, not encounter in a, very frequently in a game between uh, two high-level players. Uh, and this was played in the, in the Soviet Championship. But uh, I think it illustrates uh, my, my original point that uh, people were generally very unprepared to, uh, to deal with uh, Tal's, Tal's aggressive style and his incredible tactical awareness. And the second game I picked uh, is a game uh, from 1956 where uh, Tal played white against Alexander Tolosh, a, game, uh, a player who was also a a very, very sharp and a very gifted tactician, but uh, here, uh, well, you could you could say this was a, a bit of an opening disaster, but uh, in those years, uh, I don't think uh, home, pre home preparation in the openings played as big a part as it does today, and I'm fairly certain that uh, uh, Tal's refutation of uh, Tolosh's opening play was not a product of his home preparation, but was found over the board. And it's very, uh, once again, it's very illustrative, I think, of uh, just how dangerous he was uh, when handed initiative uh, from an early stage in the game. c5, knight f3, d6, a black goes for the knight of, bishop g5, e6, f4, queen b6.